Yeah, yeah, sure. So what's going on? Uh, my name is Raymond Chen. Uh, I'm the community manager for Nansen.ai. Uh, we do on-chain data analytics. So that's Ethereum, Avalanche, Solana, Binance Smart Chain, like Polygon, just all these uh, chains. And what we basically do is that we label wallets. So we flag whales, uh, hedge funds, um, notable people like Mark Cuban, Shaquille O'Neal, because um, these people are going to have a lot of wallets because they don't want people to know what they're doing. So we flag every single one of their wallets. Let's say uh, like Jump Capital or Wintermute will have like 50 to 100 wallets. We'll flag every single one of those wallets. And when you look at Wintermute, you can see the balances across like aggregated across all their wallets. Right. OK. And who has an interest in that data? Um, so all sorts of people, short term traders, mostly NFT traders. Um, there are some long term holders that are looking just for uh, like alpha, like let's say Jump Capital put in like, you know, $10 million. That's a pretty sizable bet. So you could go long on that position. Um, we also have an institutional team. So for people that are working in like hedge funds, traditional finance funds, uh, anyone that needs to do analytics, basically. Right on. OK. And uh, as part of your analytic, your ana analysis, do you look at the uh, level of decentralization of a, of a token or a, a coin? Because uh, in, you know, up to date, my investigation has uh, shown me that it's a spectrum. Dece there is a spectrum of decentralization. Yeah. Is that accurate? Yeah, there, there's like a spectrum of decentralization. So uh, Nansen specifically, they are not decentralized um, due to like proprietary information with like wall labeling wallets. And that's what really separates us apart from all the competitors that are also in the analytics field. Um, me personally, as an investor, I look very heavily into decentralized products. Uh, personally, I would not even invest into a product that's not um, you know, fully decentralized or even VC backed. Um, I really think that the community run projects are the ones that are really going to last long term and you know, they're, they're just going to make it. Some other projects that are, you know, backed by VCs, they're not, they may not make it that much. Yeah, I'm, uh, I've been currently looking at a bunch of projects and um, there's one called Hex yeah. by Richard Hart. Now this claims to be, it's a smart contract on Ethereum. Yeah. And it claims to be fully decentralized, et cetera, et cetera, but uh, this is an example. Yeah. Uh, there is a lot of conversation around, the, uh, you know, and it's not the only project guilty of this. There is a so-called origin address. Yeah. So, is that all right? Um, Talk a little bit on the, uh, this idea that so, like so many decentralized finance, DeFi projects or products yeah. claim this level of decentralization, but they of, often have these uh, centralized uh, keys, yeah. or and or they have this uh, supply that they've locked up or they're yeah, controlling yeah. stake, if you like. So. Yeah. Um. So it's like a multi-part question. Uh, basically, like the origin address, I look for mainly multi-sig wallets. Um, you really want people to have like, not just one person controls everything or not just a core team controls everything. Um, preferably like a rotating uh, like set of keys would work. Um, I know for like the Ethereum Foundation, they have like 11 uh, key holders where seven of them need to approve a transaction in order for it to really go through. Um, like good DeFi projects, it really comes down to, you know, doing your own homework. It's like you want to look into the core team. You want to look into uh, their tokenomics. Like like you said before, like you don't want people to have, you know, a massive amount locked up. And then there's like a one year vesting period. After that one year, it's going to be a massive drop. So you really want to see um, community run projects. Uh, like an example would be like Olympus DAO, um, Synthetics DAO. Uh, all these DAOs are really good, um, mainly because... They've been established since like 2017, 2018. Uh, Olympus is pretty recent, but everything is funded by the community. So that's really what the direction you want to invest into. Yeah, and, and a lot of the excuses that are used for launching new projects is that they have this vision to become decentralized. Yeah. But just right now, they, they have to launch cent somewhat centralized. Like, talk a little bit about that, because it, I see it repeated across many projects, this idea that, yeah. yeah, we can't launch, you know, we can't launch fully decentralized from, from the beginning. Yeah. We have a vision. No, no, I, I think that's like, you know, a bunch of lies because it's definitely possible to uh, like launch fully decentralized in the very beginning. Um, it has to do with a lot of community building. So there's a lot of people that are in the crypto space, like it's very hot right now. So they're just going to want to launch, launch, launch. Uh, there's not that many people that are doing their own homework. So from there, it's like, you know, 
all these people just want to throw money at something, make a 10x, 100x, but you know, they're just like selling you this dream, this idea that they're going to build something later on. Um, it's kind of like the 2017 bull market. It was like everybody was like have ideas, but really what you want to see is like concrete evidence and a uh, track record of how they've been managing it since the inception of the project. And uh, subscribing to a service like yours would give give access to such decision uh, data data that allows better decision making, or is that accurate? Uh, kind of, kind of. So we just we basically just flag big funds, big wallets. So it's under the presumption that their analysts have done the work. So you're not going to want to throw a hundred million dollars at something that's you know not really going to be that good of a long term investment. Um, and also, it's like. With Nansen, it's just purely data analytics. So you still have to interpret that data yourself. Um, we do have a service where we have a bunch of analysts that basically, you know, hand it to you on a silver platter, like do all the analysts, all the analyst work. Um, but in general, uh, it really comes down to looking into the core team. And do you provide like some sort of auditing service? No, we do not provide auditing service. Um, the the auditing services that I have looked into. Uh, recently, you know, Heck, Richard Hart's Hex, yes. uh, right now I'm looking at, and they claim multiple audits from certain... Yeah, yeah. Um, Hex, that's H-E-X? Precisely. Yeah. You, you're familiar with it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have, you, have you got an opinion? I personally don't think it's that good of a project. Um, can you, can I, you say I, why? I don't, I don't exactly remember why it was not that good, but I just know that they were heavily shilling. Um, and they even have, like, this... Their, their own version of coin market cap where it says hex is like top 10 but it's just they're just shady to me you know what i mean yeah but you're familiar with richard uh slightly yeah in the context of hex yeah yeah and actually uh coming back around to the auditing these uh, provi these providers of a service where they audit certain smart contracts on ethereum yeah. primarily uh, what what kind of um, weight do you give those auditing services? Because often they have a disclaimer saying, "Yes, we audited this," and at the bottom they'll say, "Doesn't mean it's doesn't really yeah, mean yeah. Sh it doesn't really mean <laughs> shit." Yeah. Right. So talk a little bit on the auditing uh, services that are provided in the, uh, across the industry. Yeah, it's similar to traditional finance. Uh, I actually worked in auditing before um, for a management consulting firm, but it's like there's levels to auditing. So you want really to have like an S tier auditing firm you know, put their stamp of approval on it. Um, you don't really want to have like these mid-tier auditing firms that are just saying it's good, but then it may not really pan out. Um, for example, it's like Consensus, I know is a really good one. Um, like Alpha Point is also a really good auditing firm. Um, those are like the gold standard of auditing. Like if you have the Consensus stamp of approval, you know, I would blindly believe you. And but how it, do you determine the gold standard? Um, just like based on the projects in the past, like their portfolio of what they've endorsed previously. Um, I'm not entirely familiar with like the auditing process of Hex, but um, if they do have the consensus stamp of approval, that's that's very high. That's a very high weight. But if they have a bunch of these like random, you know, like just small or boutique like auditing firms, like it may not be as reliable. This the information that they're providing. Yeah. Right on. Okay. And then final question. Just tell me, there was a vision. Like there was a vision for decent decentralization some of the core value propositions of blockchain technology yeah decentralization um, immutability etc etc yeah have we lost that vision or is it do you think it's still hot well immutability immutability you can't lose that um, it's you know code is law it's just built into the blockchain um, they are trying to do this layer 2 scaling solution called ZK sync uh, or ZK rollups which are zero knowledge rollups um, not quite sure how that would work as they trying to like basically like obfuscate the data and not really like have total open sourceness but as of now everything is like mainly open source like every smart contract can be audited every it's just all open source um, with decentralization I do believe that we may be able to lose that with more VCs coming in more institutional buyers moving in because they really want to control the space whereas decentralization is mainly for like you know the small people the regular people um, because, you know, like there's strength in numbers. Um, so obviously if you're already in control and there's strength in numbers, you're going to want to take away that power from the people. But as of now, I would say like decentralization is the key. Uh, I truly believe it's the future, like personally. Um, it's just the way the world is going towards.